I got a joke. I got a joke. Y'all are already laughing. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So check it out. So they had this pastor, and they had his son, and they went hunting. And they both, they was trying to get the deer that was in the deer stand, and they both let off the shot at the same, like, simultaneously. So then son was like, I hit him. And the pastor was like, no, I hit him. And he was like, nah, I hit him. He was like, no, son, I hit him. So then they had a guy out there that went to inspect the, the deer to see who actually shot, who actually got the shot. And then he looked at it, and he said, oh, it was the pastor. And he said, how you know? He said, because it went one ear and out the other. <laughs> that was pretty good. Was it? Was it? I've been holding that one in the clutch for such an opportunity. I said, one day I'm going to share that corny joke because I will be corny for Jesus. Amen. I got anybody willing to be corny for Jesus? Oh, we we got to get out of this stereotype that Christianity is just this stiff neck. You know what I'm saying? Kumbaya. I know we can have fun in the Lord. Praise God. Actually, we should be happy that we're able to gather because in some places they can't gather. You know, I, I was just preaching to a church in Pakistan live on Zoom, and they was, in the, they was in this little room, but they was packed up in that room, and they had their kids in there praising and worshiping with a little, with a, uh, it, it doesn't even look like a drum, but they was praising and worshiping. And they have blasphemy laws in Pakistan. Like, if you get caught preaching against the Quran, you automatically get a death sentence. And they're gathering with their children. See, that's another thing, with their children. So that means... They know that they know that they know that they know that they know Jesus is real. Come on, you're not going to put yourself and your family in jeopardy for somebody that might be real. No, 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 you got to know, right? And, and I want to encourage y'all today in these times, you got to know. We're not, here, we're not here just because it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing to do. It's a good, well, you know, I go to church. You know, I, well, you know, I made sure I went to church before the game. No condemnation on the game. I hope the saints win too, you know what I mean? But we are the saints because the Bible is to equip the saints to carry on the work of the ministry. So go ahead and tap your neighbor say you a saint. Go ahead, prophesy over your neighbor. So like, you don't know my neighbor, Pastor. No, no, we in the house of God, amen. Hallelujah. So this word he put on my heart, it's called caught up. A.K.A. the rapture. A.K.A. the rapture. Because some people will contest and say, well, the word rapture is not in the Bible, but if you got an old Latin Bible, the word is in the Bible. But as he said, caught up. See, this, 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 this church is Bible. People are like, what, what denomination are y'all? Bible. Oh, well, what you mean? No, Bible. Like, whatever the word, whatever's in the word, line upon line, precept upon precept, that's what we stand on. Amen? So I said, caught up. And I know some people just seen the caught up and was like, man, I've been caught up a few times. You know, in the West Bank, you know, caught up is not necessarily a good thing, right? I got anybody ever been caught up in here? Come on, tell the truth in church. Look, my boy got up with two hands up, two feet and everything, right? It's not a good thing in, in, in when, when you look at our ask it, when you look at how we talk and the abonics and our language and our culture to get caught up. Oh, I got caught up. It wasn't a good thing. But can I tell you to be caught up in this way will be the best thing that ever happens to you? To be caught up in this way will be it's basically what you live your entire life for to one day be caught up with the king of all kings and be welcomed into a place that has no sickness, that has no disease, that has no strife, that has no bitterness. That I'm talking about they walk on streets of gold like this is a real place. There's no even need for a sun because the light of God is going to light up the entire heavens. Do you know that's a real place? Because if you know, like, like sometimes I, I start reading that and I zone out like, man, I'm actually going to get to walk in a place like that. Walk in a place where there's not, there's no pain. Come on, who's over 40? You start feeling pains, places that you ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like, some days be good. <laughs> you know, some days you feel like you can run a marathon and some days you're like, oh, Lord, Jesus. You know, there's going to be a place with glorified bodies. I might be six foot in heaven. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, look, that's, let, let, let me, I got my personal relationship with the Lord. He said glorified bodies. I don't know what that looks like. 
but I know his glory. And I'm saying, I'm ready for heaven. So guess what? If I'm ready for heaven, I got to live ready for heaven. Come on. You stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. When I first went to jail as a juvenile, I went to sleep with my shoes on. Because I was ready. I know some of y'all are like, what? I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not who I was. Praise God. So I want to look at, you know, because the, the, I, I was reading, and I was doing, just doing different studies, and it said the word rapture actually comes from a Latin Bible that was in the 400s. So, so I want to just give you these little facts right here. The term rapture. First of all, the word rapture is found in the Bible if you have the Latin Vulgate produced by Jerome in the early 400s. The Vulgate was the main Bible of the medieval Western church until the Reformation. It continues to this day as the primary Latin translation of the Roman Catholic Church. Yet, as we shall see later, it was a Protestant who introduced the word rapture into the English language from the Latin raptus. That, that was the word in the Latin. It was Jerome's Vulgate that translated the original Greek verb harpazo used by Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, which is usually translated into English with the phrase caught up. Say caught up. The leading Greek lexicon says that harpazo means snatch, seize, take suddenly and vehemently. This is the same meaning of the Latin word rapio. Rapido is the rapio. To seize, snatch, tear away. It should not be surprising to anyone that an English word was developed from the Latin which we use today known as the rapture. To seize, snatch, tear away. There's going to be a time when we're caught up and he snatches us and he tears us away. Amen. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, I don't know if the church is going to is going to be here for for pre-tribulation, post-tribulation. Or are they going to feel some of the tribulation? They're three years. Is it going to be three years? I'm here to tell you whether he raptures us out before the tribulation, you still going to feel some fire because before it gets really, really crazy, it's going to get real crazy. <laughs> you caught that before it gets really, really crazy. It's gonna get real crazy, okay? Because the enemy always deals with seduction and fabrication. He's the father of lies, so it's not gonna be like day and night. He wants to usher you. The Bible I read says he masquerades himself as an angel of light. I, come on, how can people be deceived if he's not a good liar? How can he not be a good liar if he's the father of it? So if he's the father of lies, that means he has little children liars too, right? Yeah. Okay. So you got to watch. You got to guard your ears. You got to guard your heart. You got to guard your eyes. If it's not edifying to the father, you should want nothing to do with it. Because it just takes a little bit of loving. Come on, somebody. Y'all tracking with me? As you do these word studies, and I don't want you to get you so caught up on that because, you know, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. A workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, right? You need not to be ashamed when you know what you're talking about, okay? So that means you have to study. But I had an encounter with God before I even knew it was written in Hebrew and Greek, Okay? So don't let this, don't let this have overwhelm you to feeling like your relationship with the Lord is not solidified because you don't know the Greek or the Hebrew, okay? One, one time we, when, when I first got out the program, we was at a studio, a nice studio. They had the, I was doing a feature to jump on this Christian cipher. And this guy, he, you know, he did engineering for the world, had a nice, beautiful studio. And then he's in there, and then a lot of the brothers that were on the cipher were really like new, like babies in the Lord, you know, and they was using their gifts for the Lord. And as God starts coming in there, telling everybody that y'all need to stop studying the Bible and y'all need to study the customs. You know, y'all need to study Judaism. Y'all need to study the customs of Israel before you study the Bible. Man, I'm like, I'm like, like Jeremiah, it's like fire shut up in my bones. I had to release it. And then it was like, Man, this is going to mess this whole situation up. And God's like, you in this for the situation or be my son and my steward? Oh, as soon as that conviction hit, I stood up. I said, that's not true. <laughs> He's looking at me like, who are you? 
I was like, we need to study the Bible first. We need to ex examine ourselves unto the word. So we got to know the word for now. There's nothing wrong with knowing these things later. But if you get so consumed with that, that could take you into a whole nother course to where you believe that the Messiah hasn't yet came. Come on, somebody. So you got and it's this little leaven. It's a form of godliness, you know, to take you off course. So I don't want you to get so overwhelmed that you need to study this and then study that. No, first, you need to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ where you confess him with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead then you too will be saved amen, amen. just, just uh, this past uh, Wednesday I was able to go to division K this was the same division that I was looking at uh, I was I was charged on all kinds of charges as a juvenile charged as an adult on a first degree attempted murder aggravated assault all, I remember going in this courtroom so scared that I'm about to lose my entire life. I'm only 16. I just made 17. And I remember going back on the dorm and reading the Bible at the gate, at the bars, whenever the lights were cut off, trying to get the light from the hallway just to read the word. Knowing the power was in the word, but not, had, not knowing about a relationship with the Lord. But I had enough seed in me, a mustard seed of faith that my grandmother sowed into me to where I knew Jesus was the answer. And as I was going in there, I just remember how, 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 how bad my nerves would be and how I would go back and forth in it because I was fighting the charge for, for a little while. I ended up getting out, getting revoked, going back, and then making my birthday and getting turned over to the juvenile, the, my juvenile PO turned me over to the adult system, and then it was a first offender. I was able to get credit for time served. I got out, but I ended up going right back. But I got to go back this time and be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. See, my same lawyer, Frank DeSalvo, calls me and says, look, you're the biggest success story that we have. And I want, if you could speak, it would give other people an opportunity to get sentenced to a faith-based program before they go back to DOC. So in the same, the same division that I was at fighting for my life, I was able to go back and be a witness for Christ. There's no limit to what God will do with a life that is surrendered to him. I don't care what you did last night. I don't care what you did last week. I don't care what you did last month. I'm here to tell you, if you fully surrender your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no limit to what he'll do with that life. There's no limit. Amen. I, man, last time, and it's always that same division I get to go back to. And I remember the, what, the boldness of Christ came upon me. And I was talking like I was the lawyer. I said, Your Honor, may I approach the bench? <laughs> Come on, I remember he wasn't even there. I'm like, can I approach the bench? Like I'm texting him. And then he, I didn't get no response. And I said, Your Honor, may I approach the bench? He said, yes, sir, Reverend. I walked up there and I got to just speak. And then there's a reason I know the law. I said, look, he can get sentenced to this program. There is a document. There is an article that's written. As long as the third felony is not a capital offense, he's eligible for a suspended sentence with the requirement that he completes at least a one-year in-house treatment program if the DA is in compliance. He was like, oh, okay, yeah, yes, tell me more about this program, amen? So God is faithful. There's no limit to what God will do. God is the ultimate game changer, amen? And his desire, yeah, it doesn't matter what you did last night, but it matters what you do right now. Yes. And then what you walk in right now, you're going to taste the goodness of God to where you're not going to want to do what you did last night. And if you do, there will be no pleasure in it because of the conviction of the Holy Spirit because God wants to bring you to a place in relationship with him because sin separates you. Amen? This is not the time to play with sin. Okay? I mean, it never was because whether he comes here or you go there, you're still going to meet him. It's just how you meet him. As a judge or a father. In his wrath or in his glory. Okay. Oh, I got to drop the mic on now. Man, I'm grateful for this being caught up. I'm ready to get caught up, y'all. Revelations 3, 10 to 11. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. To test the inhabitants of the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. 
Say quickly. quickly. Y'all notice they had an exclamation point right there? Yeah, it wasn't a period. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. Everything that you have is faith. I done been in situations to where all I had was faith. And that was enough. Amen? Hold fast to that. But as he tells, we, we should find a peace in Revelation 3 because it says, since you have kept my command to endure patiently. How many of y'all working on patience? <laughs> Come on, don't lie in church. I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. He will keep you from it. If you hold fast to your faith, amen, if you abide by his word, there's things that's going to happen that he's going to snatch you right out of. You're going to meet him in the sky, amen? Who's ready for that? And if you're not ready for that, we get ready for that right now, amen? Because judgment is going to come upon this earth, just like in the days of Noah, just like in Sodom and Gomorrah. There's only so much that he's going to take, and judgment has to happen. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 13, 11. Thus I will punish the world for his evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will also put an end to the arrogance of the proud and abase the haughtiness of the ruthless. Mm. Revelations 13, 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. See, he raptures his church. That's his people that are living for him. That's the ones that confessed him as Lord and believe in their heart that he is real. Amen. And then the tribulations come and it's going to get people that are going to get their heads chopped off. And say, he said they was turned over to the enemy the way he availed over them. That's not in the, in, the, in the supernatural. That's just in the carnality of the body being beheaded like they will have a death that comes, but they will have glory because they did not I'll buy the feet to the antichrist system. But you should live to be ready to get taken out this thing before it gets that real. Okay? Even, even, at, even at before I even had a, a relationship with the Lord, I remember just, I, I remember I, I, was in, I was in prison when all, when not Katrina, when all, I was in prison for Katrina too, but whenever the 9-11 happened and I was in the cell block, so nobody knew what was happening. We didn't have TVs. We just had the officers come down and say, the Twin Towers exploded. We think Russia's coming, doing an attack on, on American soil. And I'm like, the end of the world coming, and I'm stuck in this cell. I prayed so hard. I was like, Lord, but, but I was praying that it wasn't the end of the world, that the end of the world wouldn't happen until I at least got released. But then... Man, it must the seed of faith. God, it must the seed of faith will take you a long way. But his desire is for you to grow. Amen. But in that, my prayer used to be that I would get my head chopped off for Jesus. That I would not bow the knee to an antichrist system. But in in in, in my arrogance, way to say, like just uh, the grace of God covered me because it's like, so I'm praying that I'll die for Him, but I'm not ready to live for Him. That's, that's an oxymoron. But that must have seen the faith, the grace, and the petitions of the saints that I had a grandmother fervently praying for me and an aunt fervently praying for me. Amen. It kept me. Can I tell you, you got some people praying for you? And now it's time to be activated because there comes to a time where you have to take responsibility. Amen. So it's no longer your grandmother's church, your grandmother's religion, amen, your grandmother's faith. It's about you and Jesus, amen. amen. Praise, praise, God. praise God. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Revelations 9, 20 to 21. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, of their sorceries, of their sexual immorality, or, th or their thefts. Revelations 9. Now when you read up 
in Revelations 9 in that chapter. How many remember this, the uh, series we just came out of, Fix Your Folk? Revelations 9 that said when the locusts were let out, they were not able to touch the ones that had the seal of God in their foreheads. In their foreheads. Amen. So in this that when it says they wouldn't repent, these are the ones that did not put on the mind of Christ. These were the ones that were not ready to give their lives up to the Lord. It's also the ones that were turned over to a reprobate mind to where there was no longer repentance for them. See, it doesn't matter if the end of the world's coming September 23rd or if it's just you might not wake up. It, not, not, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you give your life to Christ and you live ready because there is a real hell and there is a real heaven. And nobody knows the hour. Yes, we can look at the signs of the times, but we're not going to know exactly when because God is not going to tell us the exact number and the exact date because then we wouldn't need faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? Revelation 19.20. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelations 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So people will get saved. And God in his, man, God in his magnificence, in, 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 in his omnipresence, amen, in, in, in his sovereignness, he still gives them an opportunity to repent. Because his wish is that none shall perish. But why wait till it takes all of that? If you know he's real, if you know he's real, then you know that's real. If you know that's real, I don't like getting burned from the stove. A fiery, what? Man. You see, man again. <laughs> So watch this, Revelation 24, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Wow. Now we're going to go into Luke 17. Beginning at, at verse 20, it gives us a real good depiction of being caught up of the rapture. But before I jump to 20, I got to start from the top because we want to read things in context. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Luke, Luke 17. Then he said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. But woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. <laughs> Cool. We should all say, can we say that together? You shall forgive him. Seven times in a day, Jesus? In the same day? With this cancel culture society, we can't do two times in a day. No, yes, we can. Through God's grace, right? Look at the next verse. And the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Because it's impossible to do it without faith. Yeah. Now, we went over that scripture before, but I wanted to take a deeper look on the word offense that was used in context in, in the Greek. And it's skandalon. Properly, the trigger of a trap. The mechanism closing a trap down on the unsuspecting victim. Figuratively, an offense putting a negative cause and effect relationship into motion. The trigger of a trap. 
Man, did you catch that? Offense is the trigger of a trap. Offenses must come. The traps are going to come, but it's on you to step into it. The trigger of a trap. So this offense, if you get offended, snaps the trap, and now you're in it. And now that you're in it, and you pour that into somebody else, now you're transferring that same offense, setting a trap for this one, and it says, woe to you. You'll do better tile a milestone around your neck and jump in the sea. So there's always going to be trap. Offenses must come because he, he has to permit them to come because it's the evidence that we have faith and we have the mind of Christ if we're able to not get offended when the offense comes. That's hard. That's big school. Amen? But that's the character of Christ. So he permits with a purpose because if you can overcome that, then there's nothing the enemy can throw at you. So then you have these seasons to where you feel like you're walking on water and these old offenses come back up because God's desire is for you to overcome because he wants to bring you to a place. He wants to bring you to a place to where he can trust you so he can use you. A amen? Because we want to be used by God because faith without works is dead. We don't want to be sideline Christians. We don't want to be the Saints fan that knows all the plays. Some of y'all caught it. Man, he should have threw it to him. You, you know better than the coach. You ain't never put a cleat on. You're a fan. Fans stay in the stands, right? It's different when you're in the game. Ye yesterday, yesterday I was cutting the grass, and Elijah was out there running with me, running back and forth. So I was on one side of the house, then he comes running. He said, smoke, smoke. I said, smoke? I said, what? Smoke. I said, what do you mean? I said, get, get this smoke over here. So I go over there. A house on my block was on fire. All you just seen is black smoke going up in the air. So I said, go, 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 go run inside and tell your mama. So then I, I just shot out to go to the fire. I, I'm just my first instinct if somebody's in there or, you know, like, you know, because if I truly love the Lord, I love his people. But it got to be so and like you don't consult yourself. You got to be in the flow of the spirit to where, all right, somebody's in danger. We got to go see what it's hidden for. We got to go see what's going on. So then, but they had other neighbors with their little golf carts going over there, but staying over here. So then I run over here, and I guess one of the fire department dudes thought I must have was on the fire department because he tells me to help him go get the dog. <laughs> look, look. I don't even like dogs that much. No, I, don't stop coming to this church because I said I don't like dogs because I know some people really love their dogs. But, you see, come back next week. I love the, I, I just don't like them like that. Like, they're not enough to run in the fire, but... No, no, but, but the lady, the, it was an elderly lady. They had, we had, they had already got her out, and the, her hair was fringed, and she was, like, shocked. And then, like, she was barely saying nothing, and I know she loves her dog. So I'm going with him to go get this dog. And the fire's still coming out the front. They still got the hose here. They're going back there. So I'm going to do it. I put my, 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 my thing around here, like, I, I, I guess, because it was a lot of smoke. So I'm going. I'm going with him. And then uh, as we about to go in there, I was like, what's the dog's name? Like, the dog's going to answer me or something. So he's like, I don't know. So I was going. And then the neighbors in behind us said, we got the dog already. I'm like, praise God. <laughs> look, look, look. Sometimes... Sometimes God will cause you to do something just to see if you're going to do it. And then since he's so gracious, he's like, I'm just playing. You ain't got to do that. <laughs> no, no, because he knows your heart. You can't run game on God. Like when you set your heart to do something, sometimes God's like, you don't even have to do it. I was just checking your faithfulness. Let me bring it, let me bring it back to the word. <laughs> let, me, let me bring it back to the word. Jeremiah 17, 9. The human heart is desperately wicked above all things. Who knows what's inside? I do, says the Lord. So I examine man's heart to see his true motive. How many know the examination is for you to pass, not fail? Come on, teachers. When you give a test to your students, you have the, your, your desire is for them to pass the test, not fail the test. Right? So then we was able to come out. And then I was able to pray over her. 
Her husband was going to Rouse's, which is 10 minutes away. It happened that fast. Wow. So then I was able to pray over her. Then, uh, then they asked me to direct. I really think they thought I was a fire uh, worker for us because then he's asking me to direct the traffic on this end. So then I was like, I got to go finish cutting my grass. We could get somebody else because I already prayed with her and I, the dog was safe. I had no reason to be there other than being nosy. And I'm not like, I got things to do, right? But then as I go in half of the blacks out there on this side and this side, so they're the people that just came to show up just to look. They had the people to come just to be nosy. They had the fire workers that came to run in that thing and sanitize the situation. They had me coming just trying to help out. And then he took me to the church. They got some people that's just coming on Sunday just to see what's going on. Just to go, go back. Yeah, this is going on. And that's going on. There's like the nail there. By the time I got down the street, they had a whole nother story. I'm like, nah, Bill, that's not what happened, da, 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 da. So I let them know, you know what I'm saying? But they got some people that God will call into the fire, amen? amen. Are you willing to go into the fire? Are you just a spectator? You just want to see what's going on, amen? We got work to do. That's how I feel the world is at this moment, like that house that was on fire. They got people. My, my main objective was to make sure they had no people in there. Now, he threw a dog in there, like, well, that wasn't a part of the thing, but even that dog would have to come out. But that's how we have to feel about this world and about our family, that the world is on fire and the thing is about to blow, and we still got time to reach them about that fire, but only if we activate and walk what we talk, not just being hearers of the word, but being doers of the word. Luke 17, offenses must come. We're not going to fall in the trap of the offense. Amen? And then, and then he said, well, increase our faith. And I'm paraphrasing. So as he said to increase our faith, he said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could tell this plant to uproot itself, jump in the river, and get planted. So he said, if a mustard seed of faith can do all of that, then the faith you have, is enough for you to forgive. And then he said, rebuke them, right? So you have to rebuke because if there's no rebuke, there's no correction. If there's no correction, then somebody can cons consist in that same sin and there's no remissions for it. That means they're going to have to give an account for the sin that they didn't repent for. But repentance brings sins into remission as if they never existed. What happens when cancer goes into remission? It's not even detected. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise so he's saying if you had a mustard seed of faith, you will be able to forgive. We got a mustard seed of faith, so we got to activate that faith and forgive like Jesus forgave. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So then even when you keep reading that chapter and it's talking about the servant and the servant going, working in the field and coming out, when he comes home from the field, he's not going to tell that servant to just go, go to sleep. No, he's going to tell that servant, look, fix my food, fix my drink after I eat and drink. I'm straight, you can eat and drink, and then you could go to sleep. And he said, you unprofitable servant, basically saying, you don't get stripes to do with what you're supposed to do. Right. Right. Like we, like, like. That goes back to motive and posture of your heart, right? Because if you do things unto the Lord, you receive your reward from the Lord. It's not for me to receive the hand clap from you and the, and the, oh, the oh yeah from you. You know, it's like I did this unto the Lord, right? But it got to be so second nature to where you're just doing it because you're living for the Lord. So now you're not looking for no, no, no applause. Now you're not looking for it. So, and guess what? If you're not looking for it, it's not going to hurt you if you don't receive it. Okay? Now, I didn't just get here in my walk. Like, I've been in this thing 11 years. Because in the beginning of my walk, I wanted my applause. I'm just being real. I'm at the program, I'm cutting with a push more. Like, I, I, man, I, conviction hit me so hard, I'm jumping over the fence, getting this lawnmower just to cut this little piece of grass that nobody could see. Yeah. And I went like five months without cutting that piece. But then as I was growing and conviction was growing, I did it. But then 
I lose my reward when I'm like, yeah, you know, I cut that piece that nobody cuts. And, 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 then, and then they corrected me, and I'm calling them a hater for correcting me when I'm the one in error. Why he hating? Because I bet you he wouldn't have jumped behind that thing and, and did all of that. When's the last time he fasted? I fast, you know, self-righteousness. I'm being transparent, you know, because I feel like this is what's needed so we can grow. So when you're walking in it, you don't think something's wrong with you because you placed the pastor on this pedestal. And now you feel like I can't even do this Christian thing right. Let me let you know, I couldn't get it right either. I kept falling off my training wheels, taking them off and putting them back on. Amen. I ain't got no training wheels no more. But it was a process. Don't get lost in the process. Praise God. So, so, so then, all right, so then they want to, they, they, they want, he said, you unprofitable servant. Keep reading. And it went to the ten lepers. So they talking about the ten lepers that came and they, and they ran to Jesus and they asked for to be healed. And he told them, look, just go, so, go show yourself to the priest. So they left to go show themselves to the priest. And the Bible says they were healed along the way. So they were healed just by abiding by instruction. What has God told you to do? What, what, what's your petition and what's he speaking? Have you done what he said? Because that's where your healing is. Wow. It's in, in your obedience because they were healed along the way just responding to the voice of the Lord. My sheep know my voice and they listen. <laughs> okay. So one of them. And look, he said, go show yourself to the priest because one, 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 once they have leprosy, they cast out and they have to show themselves to the priest, make sure they're clean before they can even re-enter into society. Right. And to be a leper in that season, they would have to announce, hey, I'm a leper, before they come through. I'm unclean, before they come through so everybody could get out their way. What if you had to announce your sin when you step in the building? Let me get back up here. <laughs> one of them went back one of them understood he was the high priest one of them understood he was the one that healed them so he came back to give him glory then he said what about the nine where the night war at downtown right where's the nine what about the nine see nine of them didn't come back to praise Jesus I wonder if God has done some things in your life to where you didn't give him the recognition he deserved for what he did in your life. I wonder if you thought it was your boss that gave you that raise and not God speaking to your boss to give you the raise. I, 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 I was working at Comaco for three and a half years. Thank, I, I thank God for that job. I didn't like what I had to do there, but the, the, the job was a blessing. I was there three and a half years, and I, and I, I really needed a, a Christmas bonus. And I said, we're going to get a Christmas bonus. And I was speaking it. And dude said, Rev, we ain't had a bonus in 20 years. He's like, you ain't getting no bonus. Oh, wow. We got a bonus that year. Yeah. And guess what? I hurry up and gave glory to God. Yeah. I said, I told y'all. I said, y'all blessed because I'm here. Man, I got a little bit of me in there. Y'all blessed because I'm here. Y'all be mocking me. Like, I activate, you know, that God did it. It's like, we don't care who did it. It's done, you know. But I'm wondering how many times God's done something in your life and you haven't gave him the credit for it. Because only one of them came back to give him glory. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your glory. He's the only one worthy of it. Amen. Amen. So only one of them came back. So let's keep reading. So now we go into Luke 17, 20, and 37. The coming of the kingdom. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God will come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. It's the faith. It's inside of you. He said, you looking for it to be here, there. It's not like they're going to say, oh, the kingdom of God is in Marrero. Oh, the kingdom of God is in Harvey. You looking for it to be in a physical place, in a geographical place. But he's saying you're missing it because the kingdom of God is within you. 
I didn't come to restore the kingdom back to when David had it on this earth. I came to restore the kingdom inside of man, amen, so you can reign with me forever and ever and ever. See, you're getting so caught up on this physical. Isn't that a trick of the enemy when he steals your peace, when he gets you depressed, when he makes you anxious, when he gets you addicted? It's because you're so much focused on something of this world when we live in this world, but we're not of it. See, that kingdom perspective will bring restoration to your family, to your home, to your friends. Amen. There's all good things flow from that. Amen. Praise God. So he said, now, now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God will come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. You're not going to see it with your carnality. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of that which is not seen. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Say it's within me. Amen. Then he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. Oh, it's over here, it's over there. No, 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 no. It's within us. Amen. We got to look up. Maranatha. Many false prophets will arise. It's not here. It's not in astrology. It's not in the stars. It's not in your sign. My only sign is the cross. Oh, they want you to look here and there. And chakras and, 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 and what do they call that? Sage, man. Ain't nothing running off no devil but the blood of Jesus Christ. Smoke going to run. Man, come on. For... Then he said to his disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Like it be in the days of Noah. They already rejected him. He was already crucified. He died for our sins. He rose from the grave. Now we have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us. When we die to ourselves, we get baptized and we come up on fire. Death, burial, resurrection. Amen. All things become brand new. Praise God. So then as, he, as he's saying in there, these things happen. Let me read it again. Likewise, as it was also in the... Hold on, look. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation as it was in the days of Noah. So it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. All other stuff happened like the days of Noah. When did the flood come? Once him and his family were safe. Grab that. As in the days of Noah, when the judgment was coming upon the world, he made sure him and his family were safe in the ark. Can I tell you, Jesus Christ is your ark. You can only be safe in the ark. It's for you to get you and your family in the ark. You shouldn't teach your kids nothing more than you're teaching them Jesus. Yeah, they should learn math. Yeah, they should learn all these other things. But yeah, they got to know Jesus. Amen. So, so as in the days of Noah, likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Like in the days of Lot, even so it will be. Now when you read that, they wasn't able to bring judgment and wrath upon Sodom and Gomorrah till Lot and his family got out. It's like in the days of Noah, not until the family got out, like in the days of Lot, not until the family got out. So he's trying to give you time for you and your family to get out, amen, before the judgment and the tribulation comes that's going to be crazy. That, that, that will be crazy. Watch, Genesis 19. The two men said to Lot, do you have anyone else here, son-in-laws? Son-in-law, son or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you. Get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. 
The outcry to the Lord against his people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. Oh, the tribulation come. No, a third of the earth going to die. But dead bodies all over the place because of plagues. A third getting burnt up. Remember, I did the mathematics, I think, two weeks ago, and it wasn't quite yet there. So that's telling us we got a little bit more time, but he don't count time like we count time. So we having more time might just be another second. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Jesus. Well, if I would hit like a thunderstorm. Oh, y'all can all hear me. <laughs> what if he were there? Oh. Everybody. I, man, I preached one time and never mind. I thought it was the rapture. Something broke out. It was in Indiana, but it wasn't. But he's coming for his church, y'all. Tap, tap your neighbor. Say, are you ready? N neighbor, look, look back and say, are you ready? <laughs> Let's go back to Luke 17. In that day, he who was in the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who was in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Don't look back. There's nothing in that past life. Amen. The only way God will call you to look back is if you left somewhere you wasn't supposed to leave. Okay? But in this life, being obedient to the Spirit of God, walking, led by His Spirit, there's no looking back. There's no looking back and looking, oh, well, you know, I, I used to have fun here. I used to have fun doing that. No, you didn't. You was on your way to hell. That's not fun. It's like a party on the way to the, the cliff about to go off. They're having so much fun in that van. Well, they about to be destroyed in that van. No, no, we're in a safe route, so let's stay there. Amen? And that day he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down and take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. In, in, in the original text, the men, it means humankind. Two women will be grinding together. That means cooking. The one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. And they answered and said to him, where, Lord? So he said to them, wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together in the sky. Amen? Watch this. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. See, we have hope. We have hope. Amen? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, come on, do we believe? Even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself, come on, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, say caught up. We'll be rationed. We'll be snatched out of this thing together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another with these words. We're going to be caught up. We're going to be raptured up. We're going to be taken out. He's going to bring us unto himself in the air. Amen. This is a promise that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I read that again? Yeah. I want to read. I get excited when I read that. 1 Thessalonians 14, 13, 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant. Tap your neighbor and say, don't be ignorant. No, no, tap yourself say, I'm not going to be ignorant. Brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. We got hope, y'all. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. For the Lord himself, mm, the Lord himself 
will descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Some people twist that up, and they say, oh, you your, your, your grandma's not in heaven. She's, she's sleeping in the ground. To be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. So your spirit is in glory. Your earthly body's in the ground. And there's a time when he wraps his, his church, when you come out to meet your glorified body with the spirit, and he does something I can't even articulate in words. Amen. But we got to know the word of God. Amen. He's coming back for his church. We have a hope. Amen. He's coming back for his bride. We got a little more time? A little bit more? I, I, was, I, I was studying the Israeli customs of marriage. <laughs> this is so awesome. So the father basically picks for the son, the bride. And they have a moment where they meet, and there's an offering that's given to the bride. <laughs> Jesus Christ was our offering. So there's a point in time. See, the marriage is not yet consummated, but they have an agreement, a covenant that is made through an offering, through a price that was paid. And then the groom goes back to prepare a place for the wife. So, so, so watch this. They said it's usually one year they go back to prepare the place before they could come back and get the wife. But the wife doesn't know the time or day that the groom is going to come because he goes when the father says go. Man, hold up, hold up. Because he goes when the father says go. So they know it's a year span, but they don't know if it's going to be a little early or a little late. So the wife got to be prepared with her suit. Well, not a suit. With her, I say suit because we're the bride too, and that's how it makes sense in my mind. Amen. <laughs> But that means you had to be ready. I mean, she had to have a lantern full. I mean, she had to be ready for the groom because she didn't know the time and hour that he was going to come. But she knew the agreement was made, and it was made on Calvary when he purchased for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It was paid. The covenant was made. Now the question is, are you the bride? If you're the bride, you got to be ready. You got to have your lantern full. That means you need fresh oil. The anointing breaks the yoke. Crushing produces oil. So whatever you're going through, it's producing some oil in your life. Because you're going through it, but you're praising God anyway. You're going through it, but you made it to church on this Sunday morning. So it's producing some oil to keep your lantern full. Amen. Because he's coming back for his church. We got a little bit more time. I'm just going to land it right here. You know, uh, there's so much meat in here. Matthew 24, 30 to 31. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angel with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That's the second coming of Christ. That's not the rapture. There's a time when he's going to rapture his church before the tribulation. And after the tribulation, there's a time when he's coming back with his church with all power, authority, and glory. And he's coming for the rest of his children. Amen. And that's a promise that we have from the promise keeper. So whatever you got going on, it's not more important than your life, your, your, your life with Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you know you just want to make sure you stay ready. Or you want to make sure you're getting ready, amen? I want you to come up here with me, and we're going to rededicate our life to Christ Jesus, amen? We're going to get some fresh oil in our lantern, some fresh oil, some fresh aceite in our lantern, because we're going to be prepared. We're going to be fitted up and ready. Praise God. You know, the Feast, the feast of Trumpets is all... Uh, 
It's, 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 the, it's the day of that outreach <laughs> that we're doing in Lacombe. It begins at sunset, and that outreach don't end till 7 at sunset. So, uh, my, and then there's a lakefront over there. It might lead us over there to throw some rocks in there as a, as a depiction of the casting off of sin, amen, and just being prepared. I, God knows what he's doing. I was booked for this thing a couple of months ago, amen. So uh, if you can make it, make it. If not, like, maybe we could do something on this end. But let's just stay ready, amen. It's not to be fret. It's not to be worried. It's not to be anxious. It's just to know I got a hope in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what's happening down here because I know where I'm going. This life is but a vapor. I'm not going to get caught up on what I don't have here because I'm going to enter into a place that has all that I've ever dreamed and wanted, all good things. Amen. So as we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, let's do it with our hearts. Let's not just do it out of repetition. This is not Simon says. This is about you and God. This is just activation. This is humbling yourself so he can be exalted. Praise God. Amen. So repeat after me with authority and conviction. Lord Jesus, we believe that you died, crucified, and you rose again on the third day through the power of the Holy Spirit. Coward devil, get under my feet. You have no authority. I have authority through the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, I repent of all my sins. My life is no longer my own. It's yours, Lord. Have your way. In Jesus' name, we pray and let the church scream. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We give you all honor, praise, and glory for you alone are worthy of it. Father, I pray right now that everyone under the sound of my voice, that this word produced a greater level of conviction that would just stir them up, Father, that will bring them closer to you, Father God, that they would just have a burning desire to seek your face and not just your hand, that they seek a relationship with you, Father God, because it's only through that relationship that we can withstand what we're going through and what's to come, because your word says that we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So I speak that word over everyone here right now now. We come against every distraction, every disturbance. We come against divisions. We come against discord. We come against every lie of Satan and we magnify your word. We magnify your truth that we are the head and not the tail. That we will be ready, Father, because we will stay ready under the shelter of the Most High as we walk in your presence. Allow us to be led by your Holy Spirit, not by feelings and emotions, but by your spirit. Father, we thank you that it's not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, says the Lord. So, Father God, proceed to direct our steps along with our stops. Close doors that need to be closed, Father God, and open the doors that need to be open. And we will boldly walk through them, giving you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. Father, use us for your glory. We pray for our loved ones that are lost. We pray for those in the world that are lost. Father, send us to them with a ream of word, Father, that will bring life to dead places. In the almighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And let the church scream. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to do some baptisms. Oh, oh, and, and